Uh, good afternoon uh, or good evening wherever you are in the world guys in this video we're going to cover the topic of emotionally handling larger size um, for many of you if you are brand new to trading um, you are not experienced with day trading uh, or even if you are you know you're, you're you are more experienced with day trading this concept is going to seem very strange to you like the things that I'm about to say uh, are gonna sound like what do you what do you mean I'll try and explain guys you're not ready to handle huge trades. You have to size them up over time. You're, let me explain it to you. When you are over leveraging, sometimes you are going to hit big trades. You don't always just lose. I mean, that, that's kind of the, the draw or the, the, um, the reason why people gamble is because you don't always lose. But there's something um, about big winning trades, like more money than you expected too quickly there's something about that that emotionally uh, is difficult. Um, the way that you handle that very simply is that you have to scale it up over time. Because guys, if you if you over leverage, if you make too much money too quickly, it won't be sustainable. You won't be emotionally ready to handle that kind of size. You won't be emotionally ready to handle the kind of P&L swings that come with over leveraging. Um, and even if you win, Emotionally, you're going to think to yourself, "Oh, I stole that money, or I'm I'm somehow a thief, or, or you know, it's it's fool's gold, basically." But if you scale up your account over time, if you trade the appropriate size, if you're on the micro products, the micro Nasdaq, the micro ES, the micro crude oil, the micro gold, and you scale up your account slowly over time, when you eventually do start, you know, trading thousands or tens of thousands of dollars at a time, uh, it'll feel like a normal day to you. It'll just feel like you're going to a job. Um, and you expect to win. I mean, you expect to make money. Uh, so, guys, that, that's the reason, part of the reason why you scale up over time and you start small is so that when you do get to that point that you can actually handle larger size and, and you're not over leveraging doing that. So, you know, you, you actually have a $150,000 account. You have a $200,000 account. You've been day trading. You've been working up your account. When you start seeing P&L swings in the hundreds to thousands of dollars, they won't affect you at all because it'll just be like a normal day. You've been scaling up over time. And so it's in the same way that if you're a mountain climber or, uh, you know, let's say that you're about to go climb K2 or you're about to climb Mount Everest, or you're about to climb uh, uh, St. Helena or whatever. You're about to go rock climbing. You're about to travel to like Pikes Peak in Colorado. You, you acclimate to the new altitude over time. So like people who live in Colorado, they acclimate to that higher altitude. Uh, they literally like their bodies change and they acclimate. Well, it's the same way with day trading. You have to slowly expose yourself to more and more size over time so that you're ready to emotionally handle it. You know how to handle it financially. You know how to take parcels off. You know where your risk should be, et cetera, et cetera. If you just jump in on these funded accounts and you're, you're watching even simulated trades, guys, like it does something to you psychologically when you're not ready emotionally, you're not ready psychologically, and you're not ready financially for huge P&L swings, I promise you that you're going to fail. It's part of the reason why you have to learn to scale up your money over time so that when you do get there and you're making the kind of money that you want to make and, you, and you're watching, guys, you're watching your P&L swings over here go up hundreds or thousands of dollars at a time, it's not going to affect you at all. It's going to be a normal day because you've acclimated yourself to that. Okay. One of the problems with these kind of funding funded account challenges, although I think Top Step does a decent job with it, is they're throwing a, even though it's simulated, they're throwing a big number at you and, and you're not emotionally ready for it. I know that I'm not emotionally ready for huge P&L swings, uh, the, you know, for big size. I'm not emotionally ready for it. Uh, I'm not financially ready for it. I'm not emotionally ready for it. I'm not spiritually ready for it. Uh, and I'm going to be doing it like, guys, I'm going to be practicing what I preach in the sense that I'm going to scale up over time, starting with one micro NASDAQ, two micro NASDAQs, and scaling that up over time. Uh, so that the time that, you know, so long as I remain profitable over time, I will eventually hit 20, 30, 40 micro NASDAQ contracts at a time. And, and it won't feel like anything to me. So, guys, in this video, we, we, we're going to, you know, we talked about scaling. We talked about risk management. We talked about emotionally handling uh, larger position sizes. And I'm going to put this in ICT basics. I think this is something that's very important. Michael talks about this. Michael says, guys, you're not ready to make millions. I know that sounds like strange to you. You're like, what do you mean I'm not ready to make millions? Reese, I'm ready to make millions. No, you're not. You're not emotionally ready 
to make millions because you don't realize that to make millions, you have to risk millions over time. Okay, so are you really emotionally ready to make $10,000 in five minutes? Are you emotionally ready for that? Or is it going to, you know, ruin your life? Look at, look at what happens to most lottery winners. They can't handle that amount of money. They blow it all. They're not acclimated to it, guys. There's, there's a sort of, um, when you become wealthy, you acclimate to having wealth. You're used to having wealth. You, you become used to it. And as long as you're managing it responsibly, you kind of learn how wealthy people act. You're around other wealthy people. You learn what the kind of the characteristics of wealthy people, like what they do. And you kind of mold yourself to being a wealthy person over time. Okay, there's just, there's just something psychologically that comes with it. If you're a very poor person and then, you know, you're just throwing a lot of money, more likely than not, you, you haven't, you know, you have not learned the habits that wealthy people use to keep their wealth. Because, guys, if, if they didn't know how to keep their wealth, they would lose it. They wouldn't be wealthy in the first place. Do you get what I'm saying? So, guys, this is all an emotional and a spiritual and a psychological and a mathematical journey that you have to go through. You have to go through the process of having a small account, having a mid-sized account, and then having a very large account. And so you become, you go from poor to middle class to wealthy. And then by the time that you actually are wealthy, you're like, oh, I know, you know what? I kind of know the habits of wealthy people now. I know typically what they do with their financial arrangements. I know how they behave. You know, I've acclimated to having this wealth. And uh, you, might, you might completely sound like I'm sounding arrogant or whatever. I'm just telling you the truth. There's a reason why wealthy people, you know, there's a reason why they act the way that they do. They're used to having it. And so that they know the things that they have to do to keep it and to manage it. Guys, once you make the wealth, it's not really about, about making more wealth. It's really just about preserving your wealth and managing your wealth. That's why, you know, larger accounts, they always talk about wealth management because they're really not trying to become that much wealthier uh, once you have it. You already you can already do the things that you want to do, and so you just are managing the the wealth that you have. And so, guys, this is this is why I'm saying like start very small and and acclimate to bigger sizes. Do not go in initially with five minis, ten minis, twenty minis. Uh, you're not ready for it. I'm not ready for it, and and that's part of the reason why I know that I've been failing. Well, I've been doing better recently, frankly, but. That's why I haven't be, you know, become the day trader that I want to be is all about risk management and wealth management. I have entry models. I have exit models. I, I know the session times. Um, but just wealth management is, is what I need now. And then basically grow the wealth over time and then use wealth management to keep it. So anyways, guys, in this video, we talked about wealth management. We talked about scaling up over time. We talked about you know, acclimating yourself to larger sizes you got to, guys, wealth management's got to come first. I really mean it. Wealth management comes first. As you go from, you know, middle class to wealthy or low class, like, you know, poor to middle class to wealthy, you will acclimate over time. And then you, you will see what I'm talking about. And it's this, you know, basically, guys, that's how it works with day trading. You will acclimate yourself and your, your uh, brokerage account. You will emotionally be able to handle it only through repeated exposure only through a gradual raising of the number of contracts. That's it. That's the only way you can do it. All right, guys. In this video, we talked about wealth management. We talked about scaling your brokerage account. We talked about um, we talked about you know emotional and spiritual management along with the wealth management. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to put it in ICT Basics. And uh, guys, just remember, you're not ready for that kind of size yet. I'm not ready for that kind of size yet. But over time, I will be. I will acclimate to it, and you will acclimate to it as well. Uh, let's get the bad guys. Let's become wealthy. Bye-bye.